presence of the Lord in this place. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Amen. 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 We're glad for each and every one of you that are here this morning. Amen. Wasn't it a wonderful thing that we saw there about the outdoor church we had? We had church in the park last week, and that was a huge success. So what, how much fun was that? That was a lot of fun. And we're going to do it again. I just want you guys to know that. It's already scheduled. So September 4th, we'll be out at Church in the Park again, September the 4th. And so just mark that on your calendars and let's get ready to do that again. It'll be the last one for the season. It'll be getting a little bit colder than it was when we were up there last week. Man, it was 100 degrees out there last week. But um, in September, it'll be much, much cooler than that. But it'll be just as much fun. And so we want you to plan on that. And let, let's use that as an opportunity to bring somebody to church, okay? Invite someone to church and... Uh, that casual atmosphere there and uh, low-key approach of preaching the gospel is a lot of fun. It was fun for me. And I, I'm sure what uh, Pastor Steve said today is true, that there are hearts touched out there that we'll never know. There were several outside on the outskirts of the park that they were, we were getting their attention, you could tell, because they, you, could, you, know, they just kind of, you could see their ears bending and their heads turning toward the platform as we were delivering the gospel. And so we thank God for the privilege of preaching the gospel and giving people a chance to respond to the good news that Jesus loves. Yeah. Amen. Amen. All right, if you have your Bibles today, uh, would you open them up with me uh, this morning? We're going to go to Matthew chapter 9. And as you're turning there, my sound man said I need to turn the songs. So. This morning I want to just uh, bring to you a thought that I hope will challenge us, all of us, challenge all of us. Bring a thought to you that I want you to think about for a little bit. Uh, I woke up this morning and this just flooded my soul. This isn't the message that I had intended to preach. I still have that message, you know, about that signs of a healthy church that's still there. But this morning the Lord laid this upon my heart right before I even got out of bed and so I started searching these matters out here a little bit, but the thought came to me that something needs to change. Amen. Have you ever had that thought? Yes. Has that ever occurred to you from time to time that something needs to change? You might be here today and have that thought in your spirit even today that something needs to change. There's a lot of things that we face in life and as we go through circumstances and just go through life, we hit up against that dilemma. We hit up against that thought as we begin to bring reflection to ourselves and our lives. We come to a place to where we say within ourselves, something needs to change. You know, God is so awesome. You think about the character of God and, and the attribute of God. God is unchanging. He never changes. The Bible says, I am the Lord your God and I change not. And so the God that we serve is a God that does not change. He does not change. That's a good place to say amen. amen. You, you better agree with that because it is the truth. God never changes. He's always forever the same. But the interesting thing about that is that God created everything we enjoy, everything we are, everything we will ever um, come into being in our life, everything that God has done. Changes. Interesting fact that everything changes. You know, when you stop and think about it a little bit, uh, we are constantly in a place of change. Amen. For some of us here this morning, our giddy up and go got up and went. <laughs> How do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You know, we're, we're constantly in ch change. Seasons change. We're now in summertime. It wasn't that long ago when we were really upset about all the snow. Now, all of a sudden, the season has changed, and now we're really upset about all of the heat. Because we're constantly going through change. And so that's the exciting thing about life. I think life would be really, really dull if, we, if God didn't create it that way, that God didn't create us to be able to enjoy things that change. You know, when things always stay the same, 
they get boring and dull. So you pray for me today that God help me change this, amen, the way I preach a little bit so I don't bore you. That's, don't say amen to that. <laughs> but when you put this in the, into the um, context of a relationship with God, and you put it into a context of who He is and who we are, we begin to understand that one of the greatest dynamics when put into that type of setting is the fact that God's dynamic of change is important for our lives. The greatest dynamic of the, of the gospel is the dynamic of conversion, the dynamic of transformation, the dynamic of change. That's what being born again is all about. We Old things are passed away. The old man dies and a new man lives. Old things are passed away and all things become new. And so uh, the dynamic of transformation, the dynamic of conversion and change is a wonderful, wonderful thing in our lives. And when God comes and takes residence in our life because He is God and He begins to make changes in our life by His Holy Spirit, then we move into a brand new Life, We break down eternal living on this life and in the life to come. And all things begin to change around us and for us and through us. Isn't that awesome and wonderful when you think about it? Amen. So when, I, when I'm talking about something needs to change, I want to hit on a few points this morning about the things that God is wanting to change about us. Amen. See, when God comes into our lives, when we come to the Lord, he calls us to come to Him just as we are. I, I can see right now you're going to be a quiet crowd, but that's okay. I'm going to preach anyway. Amen. <laughs> when we come to God, He says, Come unto me, all ye that, are, are, that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest for your souls. He says, If you come to me, I will in no wise cast you out. And so God accepts us just as we are. Amen. When we approach God for salvation, when we approach Him to uh, change our lives by faith, God accepts us just as we are. We don't have to get better. We just have to come and express faith in Jesus, and He accepts us, He meets us at the place of where we are at. That is good news for us today. Because we might be messed up, we might be hung up today, we might have a whole lot of junk in our lives that, that need to be worked out of our lives, but the good news is, God will meet you here and accept you just as you are. Amen. Amen. He accepts you just as you are. And when you come just as you are, and you receive Jesus in your heart by faith, change begins to take place. Amen. Something spiritual happens. Something powerful takes place when you come to God by faith and accept Him in your heart and ask Him to forgive you of all your sins. So he takes all that junk, all that stuff that has us hung up and messed up, He takes it away from us by faith. And all of a sudden we get it from a place of conversion, a place of an expression, an expression of faith in Jesus Christ and the shed blood of Calvary. And we get up from that place changed. We come all hung up and messed up. We leave set free. That's the gospel truth. That's the power of salvation. That is conversion. That's transformation. That is change. And that's the, that's the beginning of a brand new work being done in our lives by the power of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that wonderful? He saves us and begins to do a new work in us from the day we get saved until the day that Jesus comes again. And I've got good news for you. Jesus is coming again. Amen. He's coming again. And so He begins to develop our lives through the process of change. Changing us to be more like Jesus day by day. Amen. If you're the same way you were when you first met Christ, there's something wrong. Hmm. Oh, don't, now you're going to get quiet on me, okay? That means I'm digging deep, so I'm just going to keep on preaching here. Amen. Because when the Lord moves into our life, He begins to change us. He changes the way we think. Oh, I'm getting ahead of my message here a little bit. Amen. Romans 12, 1 says, Be not... Uh, that you he says, Brethren, I beseech you that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And then verse 2 says, And be not 
conformed to this world, yeah. but be transformed yeah. by the renewing of our minds, yeah. by the renewing of your minds. And so we come to him just as we are, but God does not expect us to stay as we are. Yeah. Oh, that's a good place to shout hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't expect us to stay like we are because he expects us to begin to change and begin to show off Jesus in us. Yeah. When you live for the Lord and draw close to Him, He draws close to you and you become more and more like Him. Have you ever noticed that when you're around somebody a lot, you start acting like them? That might be a good thing or may not be a good thing. Depends on who you're hanging around with, right? Amen. But you begin to take on those personality traits. You, you know, you, you start to laugh alike and talk alike and answer the phone alike. My son answers the phone and they think it's me every time. Because he sounds like me. How, how is that? Because we grew up around each other. You take that on. I, I get fooled all the time when I call Jennifer's house and Taylor answers the phone. She sounds just like Jennifer on the phone. Who else has been fooled by Taylor? I mean, yeah, yeah, see, see, you know what I'm talking about here. How can that be? It's because when you're around somebody, you begin to take on their traits. What I want to say today is that God wants us to be around Him. The Lord wants us to spend time with Him so that we can become more like Him. And the more time that we set aside for Him to be with Him, the more we'll be like Him. And that's a powerful truth. And so when the Lord comes into our life, He wants to begin to process change in our lives. And he does. Matthew chapter 9. We're going to begin in verse 18. And read down to verse 21. Matthew chapter 18. Excuse me. Okay? Matthew chapter 9 verse 18. Let me get that right. I hope you guys all messed up. Matthew 9 verse 18. The word of God says this. While he spoke these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead. But come and lay your hand upon her, and she shall live. And Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. Verse 20. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood twelve years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. I thought of that verse of scripture where the woman with the issue of blood said, If I may but touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. And I thought about the issues that she had. She, the Bible says that she had an issue of blood. She had poisoning somehow, some type of infection of the blood. But I want to take this related to what this woman's need was, was an inward issue of change. So indulge me here a little bit this morning. This woman's issue was on the inside of her. She had a blood issue. She had an issue that was on the inside. It was an inward issue. It was an inward issue issue. An inward issue. It reminded me when I thought about that what Jesus said. As the Pharisees came around and saw his disciples eating with unwashing hands. 